Earlier this year, that is 2022, I was left with a lot of spare time. It got me thinking, are bigger hobby projects like this channel and my large model railway layout viable options to spend my time in the event when I don't have as much spare time left? As an experiment, I built a diorama. I started on the 4th of June and considered it complete by the 1st of October. Here's how that went. From the outset I knew exactly what I was going to build. Despite not being an adrenaline junkie, I am a big fan of the Efteling theme park. If you are a regular viewer you will know that the Efteling has a steam-worked narrow gauge railway loop connecting the back of the park with the kinda maybe sorta front of the park. Perhaps the most beautiful section on the line, and possibly even in the entire park, is this right here. The train emerges from underneath a footbridge, crosses the pond, past the gondoletta, and disappears in a deep cutting. Now just to build the thing. I started with buying this crate. It was roughly 4 union coins, which should be around $1.50 by the time this video comes out. Then it was a case of filling up the gaps and waiting a day for it to settle. After doing so, I sanded down the excess to get as smooth a surface as possible. The first thing I built for this diorama was the bridge that connects the pond from Mararaig onto Ruigreig. Mara means fairy tale and Ruig means rough or tough. As in, here is where the attractions for all the tough people are, the roller coasters and such. Ik zal varen. <laughs> I thought of the bridge at an angle, as I wanted the scene to be visible from the side while still allowing for as long a train as possible to fit in, if that makes sense. I I'm sure it will later when it's complete. I painted the bridge a colour I can only describe as weathered wood, and using an old tree I had laying around from a previous layer build, I used some of its leaves to create an algae effect. Put the track on, rust it up with a rust wash, and already you have a less flat look. Then it was time to do the water. The water in the pond is not clear, so I painted the bottom of the crate brown, and to create the desired reflection effect I cut a bit of plexiglass to size and glued it down. I did use too much glue though. Oops. I used polystyrene to create the bank and then it's a case of sanding it in shape and plastering the whole thing over to get an even surface. I built one big bank and then cut it into two big pieces, leaving a gap for the bridge and the supporting walls to be fitted later. After drying, the banks could be painted and grassed. Some people will tell you to paint the area which is to be grassed brown, but that makes the scene a lot darker I found. I put on the static grass by hand, I don't have an applicator and I find using them a bit of a faff, especially when you're just working on something small. Between June and August I simply forgot to work on the diorama. Oops again. In early September work commenced again, I made the new supporting walls out of the same strip of wood that I used to build the bridge. These were painted grey and stuck onto the sides of the bank. I didn't get it right first try though and I had to peel off one of the walls to repaint and reapply it. I believe it was the right one. I glued down the back scene first and then fixed the banks. The back scene is actually a photo of the relocation provided to me in very high quality by my friend Nat. I don't know if she watches my videos, but nonetheless. Hi Nat. With the banks fixed, I could now add a base for the flower bed on either side. I used some material that is meant to represent dirt, I think, and fine heather turf. This helps to create a purpley greeny base to again get less of a flat texture. Then I could figure out how to do the footbridge. I didn't do it in a time efficient way, but I got there in the end. I built a rough, disposable bridge with these coffee stirrers at right angles. Then I laid it across at the right angle and cut it to size. This rough outline is then what I used to create a more flexible bridge with cork, with the same bedding that's underneath most of my track work on the big layout. This was then glued down and painted grey. The next day I used clay to create a surface texture that I wanted and to harden the flexible cork. Then I did the floral decoration. The hedges were scrap from a previous build, the bushes I still had laying around, and the red flowers are simply cut up sponge. I used a cocktail stick to apply a splash of pink to the red flowers, you guessed it, for the texture. With the flowers planted I moved on to the final touches the following day. These included adding the fencing, some wildlife in the form of a goose and a duck, and fixing a tree in the corner there, the same tree I used for the algae on the bridge. These final touches were made on October the 1st, and so my diorama was complete. 
All that being said, the total cost of this diorama was... 4 euros. I only had to buy the crates, the other materials I had laying around, if you don't count the rolling stock. And what rolling stock? The locomotive is a Fastiniog 040 tender tank engine, better known as the Small England class. These were small but powerful narrow-gauge locomotives built to tackle the climb up to the slate mines of Blano Fastiniog. They had tanks to carry their water, but also a tender to carry the rest of the fuel, hence tender tank. I don't know what one would be doing in the Efteling, but a lad can dream. The carriage is a Decauville toast rack, and if you want a better explanation as to what Decauville means, I suggest watching Diego Hazard's video on the subject. But the toast racks do look like the carriages used in the Efteling, so once again, some liberties were taken. Overall, I found that building something small on this scale gives you a lot more short-term satisfaction. And if you want to get an idea of the scale, this is a Hornby Railroad 060 sitting on the narrow gauge track. You don't need loads of time to build it either. Things like the paints and plaster drying really are the only steps that take a day at least. All things considered, the total time this build took me was 20 days, give or take. So that is how I built an Efteling diorama in 009 scale for just 4 union coins. This just leaves me wondering... Where did I go wrong with my big layout?